Okay, my friends, I'm going to make this real quick, and then we're going to have to have a big discussion about it. This is, well, I'll show you where it is in a minute, but if you can look at this carefully, these are inlets, and they are different chemistry, different colors. Different colors mean different chemistry, but regardless of the chemistry, you can obviously see that we are talking about some form of a vascular network that's, it, that's just not, oh, oh that's just glaciers and this and that. No, it is not. It, this is, and look at the chemistry. You see this? You see this? There is a specific reason for that. And I will show you very shortly. And there is a specific reason for all of these enormous amounts of vascular network in this particular area. Uh, as it is all up and down this particular area where these, in, in this case, waters now enter into this structure. And what is this structure? Well, let's take a look at it. It's right over here, this big structure, right next to this structure here. And this is the North Pole. So what is this structure right here? Well, there's a guy, and I'm going to show you his video, he claims it's a heart. And I, I, <laughs> I agree with him. I see no reason to dispute that whatsoever. And wherever these things enter, I'm going to show you a bunch of more different vascular networks. This is not just an accident. And the heart is the most absolutely saturated with blood vessels, obviously, because you're pumping all kinds of blood through here. Your heart is, the muscles in your heart are working 24-7. If they don't, you, you, you're probably not going to feel all that well. Now, so what do we got here? Uh, I'm going to show you his, his um, video on it. I'm very impressed, very impressed. So take a look, see what you think. And th this is not outside of the realm of possibilities. I know people, oh, oh, that guy's crazy. Well, I don't think so. I think we have just not understood what they did understand when the ancient texts were written and the clay tablets and so forth, they, they spoke about these exact same things. Okay, my friends, you are going to find this totally interesting if you have any interest in chemistry, biology, geology, <laughs> any ology at all. What we're looking at here is some little bodies of water, apparently. We'll look a little deeper. Why are they different colors? Why is that different color right next to that? And that one's a different color. And what's going on there? Now, this is Google Earth. And someone sent me something to look at, uh, a video. And I looked at it and I was blown away. And that does not happen too often to me. <laughs> now, what are we looking at here? This something here is running off into these areas, or something here is feeding into there. But what we're, we're, I talk about abrupt transitions, and you don't see much more abrupt than that. This is, I believe, it's feeding into here. It could be feeding into that way. I, I'm not certain, to be honest with you. You go by normally by elevation, and it's 385 feet right here. And if you go down to there, it's 570 feet. So this stuff is running down into there. All right. So now, what does that mean? This is like, an, I don't know, they call it a, a, an alluvial plane. It comes in, I believe that, what's what you might call it. And look at how intricate that pattern is. I mean, it, it is very, very, very intricate, and there is a lot of abrupt transitions, and there's a lot of color changes. Now, you have to understand chemistry to understand the color changes. Why is something different than another color change? You say, well, there's some bacteria growing there in one, and the other one has a different type of bacteria. Well, why would that happen? Why would they be right next to each other, and one have a blue bacteria, and one have a green? Why? And why is this so abruptly transitioned? And why do they have a very, very similar look to... to and look at the... You know, they say, oh, that's just glaciers, and they're just running down into glaciers. Well, that could be. But I can tell you what, I'm going to show you some... <laughs> something. I say this is biology. And not only that, 
this, my friends, appears to be a heart. And you're going to say, oh, come on, Roger. And I'm going to say, yes. It does appear to be a heart. And there it is right there. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a video this guy did. This, I'm not taking credit for this because this is uh, nothing that I found. I, somebody sent this to me and said, take a look at it. And I said, okay. Let's see if I can move this up. Well, it doesn't matter. You're going to see this is flipped over in, in, in the picture that I'm going to show you. But note it. Well, I think he does a good job. Let me show you the, the video of this guy. And it, he's, it doesn't have any sound. I don't know if he had any sound, but the, the mind doesn't. Um, and you really don't need any sound. He just, he just shows it very very clear as far as I'm concerned and then when I got in real deep and I could see these different colors the different colors are transition metals transition metals are the reason you're seeing them here and there in this particular area is where the blood runs into the liver and so forth you have different metals in there that, that blood has to be cleaned up and so you're going to see different colors bleeding in there and I'm going to show you our Great Lakes you go oh, this, this stuff is just over the top I cannot account for it I'm not taking credit credit for anything either I'm just saying when I started to look at this it just went out of control and everything just fell into what we're going to see now you take it forever worth to you i'm not saying you have to believe disbelieve you can laugh don't laugh i just don't like being attacked with no evidence to against my statements i want to talk about the chemistry i want to talk about the anatomy i want to talk about the history i want to talk about the documentations that were written in the ancient texts and then what an material evidence supports it that's all simple as that okay this is uh, from what's called Tiny Ear. He's got 369 subscribers, but I'm telling you, it is fabulous. I was very, very, very impressed. And um, I was, it was nice to hear a lot of people are, uh, talking about my channel, because this is exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm, thank God for people like this. He's not obviously not got a, a big ear, <laughs> but he, that tiny ear will grow, my brother. You know, it takes a while. Now, it takes a long time, actually, but it, it's it's coming around our way, I think. But what you want to do is watch this. This is very good. I, there was no sound on mine, so I had the sound on, but nothing happened. Here goes. Now, he's pointing out that spot. And don't forget, the North Pole is right here. He's going to be talking about hearts, and that's what a heart looks like. He did a nice, really nice job. That's what I was showing you before. Now, I may stop it here and there if I see something of interest to talk about. All right, which I do. Now, don't forget, I believe this is tipped the other way around. Now, he's he's showing, see, this is at that big, I don't know, it's aorta, well, I don't know what it is, but this is, you have to be an anatomist to know what the names of these, you could fight, figure it out by looking at the anatomical, and I have a ton of anatomical shots, but let's just understand that just because this goes this way and this goes that way, it, you know, if you slice down through the center of it and laid it open, this is what you would get. One would go this way and one would go that way, but they'd still be the same architecture. And these, these are dead and laying flat and have basically eroded off the top, and we're down underneath where all the blood would be running underneath this eroded bloody stuff ran off and that's that's what does happen to him because this is very very muscular and a lot of red bloody tissuey stuff and that goes away and then you can see where all the blood was running underneath which is exactly what you see all right so here we go again now i mean this is fabulous and you see these little things here it's the same it's got all the tubular architecture is absolutely stunning to me when I saw this. He's just leaving you to make your own deductions of what you see, and which is very good, because a lot of them are, oh, I can see a dog in this and so forth. Well, see what you see. 
There it is. Runs right down here to here, right to there, just like fabulous. There's going to be a ton of blood running through all of this. This is plumbing. That's all it is. And that's nothing more than plumbing. Yeah, you got your big hook in. I, that's probably the aorta. Now, I'd like to have some biologists, some anatomists, speak about this. And I can see all of this. I think probably, well, I'm almost certain I showed you the actual muscular part, but <clears throat> that's what all these stripes are and everything. They're all muscles. And then there's going to be a lot of abrupt transitions where they hook into like tenderness or, or, or the tubes lock in and so forth. That's pretty damn good. These these ribbing looking things, they do have ribs in them. I was pretty impressed. He did a pretty damn good job as far as I'm concerned. And, whoops, I'm going to stop right there for a second, because as I showed you, there's different colors. Well, what is different colors? Mean? Why are you showing different colors on here? Different colors means different types of tissues, different types of chemistry, different types of metals and minerals in the blood. Can I prove that? Absolutely. Now, don't forget, this is tiny ear. And I, I don't know, he's got recording number 18. I was very impressed with the, the way he did it. No outrageous claims, just right to the point, bing, bong, bing. And this is very helpful, and I thank you very much, sir. And I hope my people would subscribe to you and, and be polite, and, 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 and you did a great job. Thank you. All right, before we get too far, you have to understand how complicated and complex the human body is and the organs and how the fascia and membranes and cell membranes have their own special identity and their own colors because of their chemistry. This is expended blood, and it's going to have to be recycled, and then we're going to have to take out the bad stuff and clean it up and then bring some oxygen into it and turn it back into red blood. And that's how your body works. And to do that, you have to filter through your kidneys and your liver and all those kind of things. Let me show you what your body really looks like inside. I don't think very, very many people have any idea how complicated it is. Okay, my wonderful friends, got a little construction noise going on. They're digging out in the back, putting in a couple of houses, so I'm going to have some stones to go through. <laughs> anyway, Th these are not just stones. That's a human lung, and that's been DNA tested and everything. And anybody that's an anatomist can fully understand what they're looking at there. And it is flat because it was petrified in a manner that is called nuclear um, substitution, nucleophilic substitution. And what happens is in these wet, salty conditions, the invasion of metals and minerals stabilizes flesh, all kinds of organic matter. And this is all, we'll all turn, 100% will turn to some form of rock. All of that. And you can see all of these abrupt transitions, all these specific types of chemistry and interfaces between 
organs and different types of, you know, your digestive system, your veins, your arteries, the different colors, the different chemistry. I'm going to show it all to you because until you understand it, you're just lost. You're just looking at things and saying, oh, look at that, look at that. Well, if you do look at it and then you understand it, that's all different than looking at it and saying, oh, ooh, 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 I wonder what that is, and then not wanting to know what it is. And this is what I have discovered. People don't want to know what it is. And this is where we got to really get into now, is into the sec secretion of the peptic juices in the bile, and, and the different colors that we're going to see. Because that's what I'm talking about when I'm, whoops, can you see that? You see this book. Alright, I hope you can see all this. Now, th this is um, where we're going to find a whole batch of different colored secretions that are juiced into the system to make things dissolve and their enzymes and catalysts and, and, and um, digestive juices and all that stuff. Acids, salts, it does it all. And I, you have to look for the signature chemistry and now we're going to do that. Alright, check this out. This is really important for you to understand. Transition metals are right here. They're right in the center of the periodic chart. And the reason is, is they have, they can absorb other electrons deep inside. Not like just on the surface. Most of these other ones here, they can only grab on one or two little electrons on the outside. These can get deep inside. So they are used to transition other molecules and move them around and change their bonding characteristics. And they attach to them and move, they have other molecules that attach to this. You see the plus two, three, four, fives, all that stuff? Well, what that means is it can grab on, like pinch on one that has a two or a three or a four or a five. And then it brings it down to somebody who says, I need a five. Here it is. I need a two. Here it is. These are what they call, they're called ligands. They're attachments to these. And that's what these do. They go through your blood. And they are all, that's the colors of your blood. And all together, it makes a nice dark red blood. Once you take all the oxygen out, now that's the O3 style blood. There's an O2 style blood, which is dark. And that's blue in your body. It turns black in mud fossils. And I'll show you all this stuff in the microscope. Uh, but it's all chemistry. There's no, nothing here that isn't chemistry. That, that's what, this is blood. Literally, this is blood. And, of course, there's other stuff in it, too. And aluminum is a real aggressive molecule uh, element that way down inside to break up chemistry on both sides of the peri periodic chart. So, um, and there's a lot about aluminum. It's a very, very interesting element. Anyway, these are the different colors. Now, let's see if, can we see these colors? Absolutely, I can show you those colors. I have them in all these rocks here. Now, I have some, um, hold on a second. I got my other stuff working up here. You see here, I'm going to show you up in my other microscope. Up here, hold on, let me come up a little higher. These are some shots I took a while back, but we're going to look at some in the microscope in a minute. But this is the way they petrify. This was inside of a lung. You see that? That's where blood was rolling around through there. These different colors are the things that would have normally absorbed, and they're in pockets. This would have, just like this, only would have had holes in it. I mean, uh, no holes in it. It would have had blood in here. And the blood has all the transition metals in the colors. Now, here's another one. Hold on. Whoops. I don't know if you even saw the other one. Anyway, these are what... Well, these are what lungs do. They have all of these little pockets in them. And I'm going to put this in a microscope, I suppose. That's the only best way to show it. But if you can see on the side, you see all those little divots in there? They're not in there for no nothing. There was blood flowing through there. And then when everything... You see the little chunk looking like the little, little chunks of things here and there? That's different alveoli, and there's different what they call seed metals and so forth. And the red is basically blood. It's dried up now. 
and we're going to look at some of this stuff in a microscope but I have I mean I've been doing this a long time and I have a ton of it and like this fingertip right here all right we can look at that and see what that is on the end why is that there got any guesses why would that be on the end of a fingertip like that right. and we can look at this and I can show you the vader vein and the artery in the back here and how they crystallize you see this was in a different type of condition and chemistry than the other ones that I can show you which are strictly basically mud this turned crystallized uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> this is going to be a real good one to see I gotta get these wet for you to see them good this is a toe <laughs> That's a toe, and I, I, I could show you this pretty well, and I think you'd be quite agreed that it is a toe. And that right there, <laughs> that right there is the callus. It's a big toe. I believe. Well, you look at it, you see what you think. I could be wrong. I have another toe here that's a big, 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 big toe. And this one here is so easily to see that it's a toe. I can show you later. But anyway, this gets a little complicated. And I get a little carried away going this way and that way. But there's so much to understand. I just want people to start looking on their own. And so far, people are starting to um, turn around and start looking. You know, I don't want to just have to keep showing over and over and over the same stuff. People are starting to get, oh, you keep showing the same stuff. Well... You show me some stuff. How about that? Okay, my friends, I'm going to explain to you about the transition metals, which are the metals that are in your blood. Literally, this is your blood. They are right in this range in the periodic chart. And the reason is, is they have, they allow to absorb electrons of molecules that normally you don't absorb. In these here, they can only absorb on the very tips of their surfaces, and that's not too elegant. These can absorb serious amounts of chemistry, and they do. And they, what they, they call ligands. They pinch, and they carry this one guy says, I need something with a five, and he says, okay, I got one here. I'll bring it down to you. Blip, he gives it to him. He gives him a three and a two or something. I don't know. You know, there's an exchange of, of chemistry, but it gets a good one, and it takes a bad one. That's how it works. It's an exchange. Now, so what, what would you expect to see in your blood? You'd expect to see all these colors if they settled out. Can I show them to you? It, if I had a heart that had all kinds of colors in it, would that satisfy your curiosity? Let's see. All right. This is an opal heart. And I believe it's from the Yoa region in Australia where they have a lot of this because the chemistry there was facilitated this. There was something that invaded with transition metals and said, hey, is there anybody here that needs some blue? Yeah, I need some blue. And they, all the blue guys came over and they stuck to where that specific tissue, which is heart strings and the vent uh, ventricle walls, it looks like. Now, what else went in there? Well, the blood went in there. These are the little heart strings, you see them. Now, the blood went in there. Well, what did the blood do? Well, it sort of settled out. Well, how did it settle out? The heavier stuff sort of sank. This was the side that was down. This is the side that was up. This has no real metals right at the tip of the top of the dome. All right? The metals are heavier, and they sink down specific gravity. And, and that's what we see here. Now, you see this is more green all the other ones look to be, you know, pretty much not saturated. This is saturated basically with green. Why? That side of the heart was next to, a, I can, maybe the kidney, I don't know. Uh, we have to look at that chemistry. We have to look at that exactly where is that on the heart. There's a lot to examine here. I don't want to go through every little bit in detail. I'd be here for a hundred years. I'm, not, I'm, I'm serious. This is, this, we've got to start from the beginning. Of, if that is a goose, which it is, this is feathers. They didn't just grow there for nothing. These are collagens. Every single thing that they call feldspar, 
which is the coating of these rocks, is collagen. I am telling you, literally 100%, when they say that's feldspar, that is the coating of some kind of skin or tissue or membrane. And then when you get inside, you got the arteries and the veins and you've got the architecture of the the throat and all that business but that stuff has a different chemistry so it turns to a different molecule I'm sorry Caesar all right now other things turn into crazy molecules now this is a hard this is the same as this is ex literally exactly the same only this is what they call water opal now, probably hard for you to see, but when, when I put a little water on these, well, it has nothing to do with water, oh, this particular water putting on here. Water rehydrates and it gives you a nice depth to the stone you're looking at. Usually, because it, it, normally water just penetrates right in. You say, oh, no, it's just a stone. It can't pick up the water. It does. It's, there's, there's little tiny spots that will absorb it and then it will give it a little more definition. Let's go with definition. Alright, but you see this one's empty. These babies are full. It, totally different biology, in, I mean uh, chemistry in that area. Same biology, different chemistry. Simple as that. Like this one right here. This turned literally a piece of meat. Just stayed a piece of meat. I mean, you you, you probably couldn't eat that with your teeth <laughs> staying in, intact. But that's literally a piece of meat. When I first came out of the ground, there was blood all over. Not necessarily on that one. But I, I, let me see if I can find some of these shots. Anyway, you see what I'm showing you? This is all... Biology. This is not just an aggregate of some nonsense. This, this, this one here, I'm sure, was uh, probably a lung. I, I'm not a positive of, of um, really. I'm not positive of much of anything, but I'm pretty damn sure about it. Until somebody looks at it, they just laugh at me and they say, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about." Well, show me what I'm not right. If that's not a bone, I mean, getting an anatomist that says, no, 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 Roger, that's not a bone, that's just a bone. And this is the kind of stuff I get from Yale and Harvard and all the Johns Hopkins, the people that you expect would just want to have a question. No questions, you're just wrong. Have a nice day. I say that's a lung. I say that's all those are alveoli. And I say that's why this is so red and rusty looking. <laughs> because it was blood. And that's the architecture of the heart, I mean, of the uh, lung. And I know this one, hold on. This baby here has been DNA tested, eh, CAT scan, eh, everything, 100%, no question whatsoever. It's a human stone lung. And it died, I'm absolutely sure, in a flood in the manner that all the mud fossils I'm showing you died. And this night didn't happen that long ago, because you've got to look into Velikovsky. All right, I know I'm running a little long on this, hold on. All right, as I've shown a bazillion times, that is nothing more than some form of flesh and meat. And this is an abrupt transition where it changes from the meat and makes an attachment into tendons. And you see these blocks on the floor? They look like they're put on there, and I think I'm more than likely are. And it's fabulous, all of these lights and everything. I mean, it is it's just spectacular looking. But in our anatomy, we actually do have squares almost identical to this. I know it sounds crazy, and I doubt whether this was just natural, but I, can't, I cannot discount that. I really can't, and I'll show you why. So here you go. Again, pink salt mines, pork ribs. Now, where would the salt come from? Salts come from certain organs that secrete them in your body, and they secrete acids, they secrete enzymes that break down different tissues. And when they do that, they become invadable. Okay, I have this listed as a salt potash soda ash mine. 
and they're in here and this looks to me like a membrane and there's a layer over the top of it and then inside this membrane is going to be a bazillion layers where there's bacteria living in a living creature this is what this is your boundary layer between you let's say is up here and your guts and all that are on the other side you don't want to get invaded and all this other stuff is down here and trying to get through all these layers and they will that's called stage one cancer it nibbles 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 it gets to here stage two it gets to here stage three it gets to here you start getting real inflammation all over the place everything gets inflamed and then it breaks through and it's all over cancer and a lot of diseases chronic illnesses are slow invasion COVID whole different issue straight through now we don't recognize it so it somehow gets through or the other possibility is its surface molecule molecular surface mimics something that we want to accept it's one or the other because it's, it's all cell differentiation now they call it and and it's this differentiation happens on the membrane so it's like you bumping up into your neighbor and you you, you know the guy you shake hands everything's good you don't know him you say whoa, 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 you can't come in this house until I know what you're up to and that's how it works but in when we don't know or, or we think it's a, the same guy but it's not and we let them come in they come on the other side and they kill us or we, we just can't stop them. Somehow we have a, a, a pathway they can jump right through. And, we don't, and, and once it's through, we have no way to fight against it. That's really what it basically boils down to. It's getting on the other side of the membrane and, 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 and attacking us. And we have no way to fight back. So, well, the, the um, vaccines give us a way to fight back. And we will build immunities to this over time, but some people are not going to make it. You know, this is a really mess. I don't want to get even talk about that stuff. All I'm talking about is how you get invaded. And you get invaded by breaking each one of those barriers down. And I know people that do this kind of stuff. They understand how many, how many layers there are. It's staggering. Absolutely staggering. And you say, oh, this is just gigantic stuff in there. Yes, that's right. But it's not much different than you and me, buddy. It's the only thing is, is it's a lot bigger and we can see a lot more detail. You see the black and white and black and white and black, you know, black and red, black and red. That's the different, you know, you you have to service something with red blood and then you have to take it back out of there. And th I believe this is interstitching. And I believe interstitching now, we really got to analyze that fluid and see how quickly we get stuff into that interstitching, how quickly it moves. And I think it moves fast. I mean fast. And it, through that, like it's a super highway through your body of chemistry. Because when you say you, you, you get upset or something and your eyes get teary or something or you have mucus or you, you, you're sending t tingling or any of that stuff, it's instantaneous. Someone's got to communicate. And it's communicating through these nerve tissues, really. But a, a lot of it is chemistry, and the chemistry has to get there somehow. How, does it get moved to there or does it get created there? I think it might just get created everywhere it needs to be created because the chemists are living there, which are called the bacteria. If the chemists aren't living there, you can't create the chemistry. So then you begin to get invaded because you have nothing to say. Hey, we'll, we'll get some mucus down here. Well, the mucus guy's gone. Well, stage one. And then, you know, the same thing. Send some troops down there. All the troops went home. Maybe they were killed. Some guy with antibiotics came through here and killed them all. Or they eat some GMO thing or just some, whatever happened. Your bacteria is fighting against, it's a continuous war inside your body. Every single tissue has its own specific armies. Think of it that way. All right, your muscle is protected by a certain type of army. Your kidneys are, have an absolutely totally different type of army. They, they fight against acids instead of salts and that type of thing. Uh, it's just all different. It's different everywhere in your body's different. And I think there's 80,000 or so different bacteria, and every bacteria has its own chemistry. They make a chemistry. That's what they're for. They're for. They make catalysts and enzymes, which are chemistry sets. And if you call to that bacteria and say, make it, and the bacteria is there, and there's enough bacteria there, they make it, 
you're good to go. If you call and there's no bacteria there, just nothing happens and you're invaded. If you don't make the call, well, nothing happens, so you're invaded. Why wouldn't you make the call? You make the call based on the fact that you're already programmed from birth, basically, in your genetics to say, here's how I react in these certain conditions. And then as you grow and encounter conditions, it says, oh, remember that, remember that, if a car comes heading at you at 60 miles an hour, you just walk out to the side of the street and get out of the way. Or you don't get to be 15 years old, you know. you you got to pay attention to what happens to you. And that gets programmed in these areas in your brain. They're called CPG islands. CPG islands. And they get there's a process in there where they get turned on. And normally they're just blank, they, just don't, don't, they don't really affect you, apparently. This is all sort of guesswork at this point. But the CPG islands, uh, I'm getting too complicated. I have a tendency to do that, but I just find all of this stuff fascinating. And the people that don't, they have no fascination to it, I find fascinating as well. <laughs> In a totally different direction.